This is a Baofeng UV-5R. We're going to refer to this as a ham radio. This is the Baofeng UV-5G. This is the latest model of Baofeng's GMRS FCC compliant radio. Which type of radio is better for emergency, survival, and anything else you might come across in the wilderness? Well, that's what we're gonna talk about today. Let's go. The Baofeng UV-5R is the absolute best radio on the planet. Check down in the comments and you will see. How dare you! You can do everything with this radio. You can program repeaters, any VHF, UHF frequency, ham radios. You could talk to basically anybody with this thing. The problem is if you do not have a license, a ham license, technician or above, you cannot push this button. Go figure in this free country we control the free airwaves. That's for another video. But you can program repeaters and you can program frequencies. You can listen to everything and you can scan anything. You just cannot legally transmit. Just push that little old button without getting in trouble. The Baofeng UV5G radio, otherwise known as a GMRS radio, can operate on FRS, MERS, and GMRS frequencies. And what's cool about the latest model is it comes pre-programmed for every single channel to operate properly and legally. The only thing about GMRS is if you're going to use a GMRS radio and transmit on GMRS frequencies, you still need an FCC license. Again, free country and we're controlling the airwaves. No big deal though. All you have to do for a GMRS license, you go on the FCC website, Right now you pay 70 bucks. There's rumors that they're going to drop it down to 30, but there's no test, nothing to study for, no crazy stuff. The hardest part of getting a GMRS license is navigating a government run website. So you go on there, you pay 70 bucks, fill out some forms, you get a call sign emailed to you and boom, you and everybody in your family can legally use a GMRS radio for up to 10 years. And then guess what? After 10 years, you go do the same thing give the government 70 bucks and you could talk on the free airwaves. So when it comes down to emergency survival, there's a couple differences between these radios that we have to talk about. So if you know about ham radio, one of the key functions of ham radio is to be able to talk to repeaters and talk to people basically all over the country. Now there's ways you could talk through the internet and you could talk international, but that's for some serious nerds. We're talking about just your everyday average Joe running around out in the woods who might get into trouble. I have all the repeaters programmed on this Baofeng UV-5R. I have listened to transmissions. I have scanned, everything works. And I've actually handed it to a ham operator and said, hey dude, get some radio checks on these repeaters for me. See if I set it up right. And he was like, no problem, dude. Because he was not one of the 1% of the ham Karens. So everything functions on this radio. The GMRS version comes with all 22 GMRS channels, which includes your FRS and your MERS channels. And the radio is pre-programmed for the proper bandwidth and the proper output. All you gotta do is turn it on, push some buttons, and you are ready to go. It also comes with the eight repeater frequencies programmed in there. On the Baofeng UV-5R, you have to go manually program your repeaters you have to put in the offset and everything else, and you have to do that on your own. And then you have to be a licensed ham operator to transmit and double check that you did it right. With the GMRS, you put it on a repeater channel. If there is a repeater up to that channel in the area, you will be able to talk to it. The GMRS version is ready to go and it is ready to talk to repeaters. So as far as what is best for emergency preparedness, well, you're gonna have to figure that out further yourself. If you want to go get a ham license, which is pretty cheap, but you're going to have to study and take a test, then I would say the UV-5R or any kind of equivalent ham radio will be your best bet because pretty much everywhere you can go in the country, you will find ham repeaters and you will be able to talk to somebody. A lot of ham guys have their own base stations up and their own repeaters and you can use all of those. What's cool about GMRS is not only do you just pay a fee and you get a license and you can talk on all the frequencies that this radio allows you to, 
But if there is a repeater in your area, you just turn it on, put it on that repeater, and you are also legally allowed to transmit on that repeater. GMRS repeaters are all open. There are no private GMRS repeaters. So what do I do? Well, I actually carry both. Why? Because they're both freaking light and small. And I think I've had this one for over five years. And so all the ham Karens that say it's junk, they're just mad because they overpay for their stuff. But the point is I carry this ham radio with me. I have a spare battery to go with it. It's off and it's in my bag. So once I take off on the ATV or once I head off of my truck for some overlanding or off-roading, I have this thing and an extra battery and all the repeaters are programmed in case I get into some real trouble. You are legally allowed to transmit on ham repeaters and all the frequencies if you are in a real world emergency. Remember that. The only problem is you cannot get any training, which means you cannot just pick up the radio and start transmitting and talking to people without a license. The ham guys will definitely let you know if you are doing something illegal. Believe me. The GMRS radio, you pick it up, you push some buttons, and you can talk to anybody, anywhere. If there's repeaters out there, you can also get practice using repeaters. You can test the range, you can freely walk around and just talk, as long as you have your GMRS license. So, I carry both because this is what we use up in my area. We have some repeaters out here. We can talk to each other pretty long range. And given the mountainous environment, it's good to have something overhead to bounce off of, which is what re repeaters do. They repeat your signal so somebody can hear you on the other side of a mountain. And it's good to get actual communications training and be able to talk to people. Where I am... GMRS is kind of lacking still with the repeaters. That is going to change. GMRS will become the primary means of communication. A lot of truckers that I have met, they actually use GMRS and ham. But given that you have to study an insane amount of information just to get your ham license, a lot of people, because they just want to go out in the woods and talk to each other, whether they're off-roading or they're walking around in the woods or camping, a lot of people don't want to do that. They want to go buy a radio that is very budget friendly and start talking to people. Well, there you go. Both of these radios have their own capabilities and positives and negatives. If you do not want to get a ham license and you do not want to be illegal, but you also want to be able to practice, then I would say the GMRS radio is going to be your best bet. If you want to get more into amateur radio and get a ham license, Go ahead and get a UV5R, start programming it and scanning and listening to stuff. Do not push that button or the SWAT teams will bust down your door. And then you can study for your test, get a little piece of paper that says you're allowed to push this button and you're good to go. Okay, so let's talk about GMRS for a minute. So what is the best frequency or channel to be on? There's a handy little table you can find easily through a Google search. It'll tell you what frequency corresponds to which channel. It'll tell you which bandwidth that channel is using. And it'll also tell you which frequencies correspond to which repeaters. You don't need to know any of that. What's good to pay attention to is which channels are FRS, MERS, or GMRS. Some of them only allow you to transmit using half a watt of power. Given that the Baofeng GMRS radio is already set to the proper power output for that channel, you're going to want to know which one you can actually transmit full power on. Transmitting full power means you're probably going to talk further. That's not a guarantee, but you're going to get a longer distance out of 5 watts than you will out of a half a watt most of the time. Obviously, if you have a repeater in your area and you can reach it with your radio, that is going to be your best bet to talk to somebody because you're going to be able to reach a farther distance. Now, what channel should you be on? Well, if you guys don't know about overlanding and off-roading communities, they generally go with the channel 16. Why? Think about a truck or an off-road vehicle. 4x4, four 4x4 four, four four equals, there you go. See, even this dumb grunt figured it out. So a lot of people default to channel 16. That's going to give you your full 5 watts or whatever you can get on the radio. You'll see toward the bottom of the table, that's what most repeaters and that's also what people's power amp systems are put on because you can actually output with 50 watts on those channels. Either way, channel 16 is almost always the default channel for people running around in the woods, especially off-roading and all that. Now, 
a lot of people in the GMRS community have picked up on channel 19 being your roadway channel. And that just comes from the old CB days with Breaker Breaker 1-9-er. That means channel 19. That's all just kind of extra for you guys. None of that really matters. If you are out with a GMRS radio and you have the little piece of paper saying you're allowed to push that button, you could talk to anybody on any channel. So once again, I carry both. One is to actually get training on and to use as daily comms out in the woods and also do a bunch of experimenting. If I ever get into a real world emergency, I have the ham radio, all the repeaters are pre-programmed and I can just freaking pick it up. Hopefully a ham dude is sitting there and after he's done yelling at me for five minutes about why I don't have a license and why I'm improperly using my radio and the FCC SWAT team is going to kick in my door or parachute onto me out of the sky when I'm out in the woods, then I can tell him, hey, I have a real world emergency. I need some help. And then if he actually cares about the ham community, amateur radio and his fellow man out in the woods, he'll help you out. That's pretty much what the ham community is all about. 98% of them are awesome dudes. They are total radio badasses and super duper radio nerds. And that's what they got into it for, to be able to help people out in emergencies and have some fun and talk to the moon and the space station and all that. Then you have a very tiny percentage of it that's just gonna yell at you because their lives suck, let's face it. So that's it guys, thank you for joining me. I hope you learned something. If you wanna know more about radio, especially the GMRS stuff, because it will conquer the ham community, bet on it. Then go ahead and let me know down below. I will pin a comment so you guys can ask all your questions or give me some suggestions. Unless we see an awesome intellectual comment from one of the ham guys. I might have to pin that one. Be sure to like and subscribe. And until that next video, I will see you guys in the outdoors. Take care of yourselves. Prepared lives matter. It's getting hot. Hey Roy, what's going on? No call signs. GMRS, oh, no, little to no Karens. Alrighty. No Karens.